So my name is uh, Greg, and uh, I'm part of uh, Lab Group 3B, Tuesday morning. Uh, this is Lab 6, where we are told to uh, investigate uh, basically off-axis aberrations. Last week we took a look at uh, spherical aberration. This week we'll try to measure coma and astigmatism. So we start off with a laser aligned down an optical rail, uh, which propagates through a microscope objective and a spatial filter, and a collimating achromatic doublet. Uh, so we have a beam expander here, the expanded beam, uh, expanded collimated beam is uh, deviated 90 degrees using this mirror here. It uh, fills the entirety of the Hartman mask, which as you can see creates uh, five uh, points there, five, five rays essentially. Uh, on the outside, the four, you can see those, those are essentially the marginal rays of the system. Uh, and once uh, this is our 100 millimeter test lens that focuses the beam down onto the microscope which then projects the image onto this observation screen and I don't know if you can see there but we do have a nice little mesh grid pattern which is a result of having all four marginal rays focus at the same point. Hi I'm Kevin and uh, for the rest of the lab we wanted to measure coma and astigmatism in the test lens and in order to do that we needed to create an off-axis field because coma and astigmatism are both field dependent. Uh, so in order to do that, we uh, moved the microscope laterally first by five millimeters and then the second time by three and a half and then we did the uh, negative values in order to get the full spectrum of, of field values. Um, we then adjusted um, this mirror here so that um, the ray going through only the center hole of the Hartman disk was projected through the microscope and in focus on the screen. And then we um, covered up all the holes except for one of the marginal rays at a time and then we focused that using the microscope and then we would look at the opposite marginal ray and theoretically in terms of coma uh, the two values should be approximately equal uh, which is approximately what we got uh, Fa is going to talk about that in a minute uh, and then in the next part in order to measure astigmatism we looked at two opposite marginal rays simultaneously and we adjusted the microscope uh, both laterally uh, perpendicular to the rail and parallel to the rail uh, in order to get the two rays into focus uh, along with the, um, the virtual crosshairs on the screen and that told us how much astigmatism was in the lens. Fox. Hey, I'm Fa and I'm going to discuss about the results from Kevin measurement. So here is a picture of coma, the aspirin cone. So what in the lab we're measuring is the tangential coma and sagittal coma where A and B on the pupil will uh, locate the same uh, point in the image plane. Uh, the result turned out to be really close at about 13 micron difference. And sagittal coma will be measured from the point C, D to P. And that turned out to be a little bit bigger. It's probably because the uh, contributions of astigmatism from the lens to the system. And from, from the known of CT, which is the difference between uh, the translation of the mic the mic the microscope from P to A B. We just put in here and calculate W one three one and the same for C S we can calculate from the W one three one which can help us to calculate later card. For for exomatisms as you see that we have three different uh, location tangential uh, focus, medial focus and sagittal focus, which is a line, a circle and a line. So in the lab, basically, we want to measure the change of the micro the microscope is the distance between the tangential to sagittal focus. And that's L. We substitute it in here. I'm sorry. We substitute in here. Um, it's the change of the, it's the focus term. So we can calculate W222. Uh, if you look at the, as this that demonstrate in the picture right here, this distance is the distance we try to measure. So in the last part, we want to uh, calculate how much uh, how how much uh, coma and and astigmatism in our system. We know these, and we know these two terms. We take the derivative of W. We know this, and in the lab we measure this, and we know everything else. So we can determine uh, how much uh, dy would be.